In this series, we're going to be taking an in-depth look at the entire conservation process as it relates to one painting. This untitled scene of Fifth Avenue in winter executed in oil on canvas by the American Impressionist painter Guy Wiggins arrived at the studio in desperate need of conservation. The painting had an accumulation of surface grime and the old varnish had discolored. The paint layer was heavily cracked and beginning to flake off in spots, and the old conservation work, completed sometime in the 1960s, had begun to fail and was no longer serving any beneficial purpose. The clients had owned the piece for generations, dating back to when Wiggins himself gave the piece to a relative. During that time, the piece was generally well cared for, though age and exposure to adverse conditions had taken a toll on the work. The clients were interested in conserving and restoring the piece and stabilizing it for the enjoyment of future generations. The first step in any conservation is the visual examination. Looking at the painting to gather as much data as possible before touching it is essential to understanding the piece as a whole. In addition, looking at the old conservation to understand how and why it was done will better enable its reversal and addressing of the underlying issues that prompted it. While seemingly simple, the visual examination will allow me to get a better understanding of the painting in its current state and afford me the time and headspace to consider the materials and techniques that I may have to employ to achieve my client's desired result. After the visible light examination, we switch to ultraviolet or black light, which allows the conservator to observe the fluorescence of the materials and gather more information that may not be clear to the naked eye. This examination can reveal old retouching, new materials, help differentiate between mediums, pigments, and varnishes. Learning how to read the fluorescence takes years of practice and can be more of an art than science. Deep purples can often be read as old retouching or recently added pigments. Bright greens can be seen as discolored layers of varnish. Then again, some pigments such as zinc and titanium white naturally fluoresce even if they're original, and masking agents such as shellac and polyurethane are employed to conceal the newer work and all but prevent the ultraviolet wavelength from being an effective tool. In addition to all of the time spent looking at the artwork, it's helpful to spend some time on the artist. By researching the painting and the artist, we can learn about their working process, the materials they may have used, and if there are any potential issues that lie in wait. Further, if we can learn more about the artist's body of work and vision, we can better execute the conservation with that in mind. In addition, as this work was previously conserved, we can investigate the materials and techniques that were common during the 1960s in an effort to avoid costly scientific testing and better prepare for the work ahead. After all of the visual examination and research is concluded, we can move to the physical testing of the materials. Detailed notes are essential and will be referenced multiple times as the conservation proceeds. A small sample of the lining adhesive is taken from the tacking edge and stored for testing. As the lining will be removed, it may be necessary to send this sample to a lab if its composition cannot be determined locally. The first step in cleaning a painting is removing the grime that can consist of dust, dirt, cooking oils, cigarette smoke, chimney and furnace soot, and other particulate matter. The chemicals used to remove the varnish often have difficulty penetrating through the grime layer, which can lead to the use of increasingly stronger and more aggressive solvents, which is not only unnecessary, but can expose the paint layer to the possibility of damage. Starting with distilled water, we will work our way through various detergents, enzyme solutions, soaps, and other agents until we find one that is effective. These small tests are conducted in inconspicuous areas, usually at the edges of the painting that is covered by the frame rabbit. Once an adequate cleaner has been identified for the grime, the testing of the varnish can begin. Natural resin varnishes can yellow over time with exposure to ambient UVA and UVB light or become cloudy and brittle. Starting with the mildest of solvents and varying in composition and increasing in strength, the areas where the grime was removed are tested until the varnish is adequately and safely removed. It is often necessary to test different areas of the painting as different paint colors or brands of paint can have different reactions to the same solvent. That is, while the white may be stable, the blue may be fugitive and the cleaning approach must vary to reflect this. Relying on years of experience and research, we can narrow the possibility of lining adhesives before we make any tests. By observing the sample's reaction, as well as using the sense of smell, the identification of the adhesive as rabbit skin glue allows the removal approach to be determined. 